Hello guys welcome to the Filmy Explain. Today I'm going to explain a romantic comedy series named Mr. Fox and Miss Rose. Let's start. The film opens with Gao, a young man, lying unconscious in a damaged vehicle at the foot of a cliff. From a distance, Zing, a girl from a nearby village, observes the wreckage. As Gao regains consciousness and attempts to leave the car, he stumbles through a rocky landscape. Shortly thereafter, Zing approaches him and uses a stone to render him unconscious once again. The film transitions to eight hours prior to the car accident. Gao, a gem hunter, meets up with his dealer Ziana and technician Kin on a sidewalk. As they converse, Gao notices two suspicious men in a car down the street observing him and realizes that they are hired thugs. After bidding Ziana and Kin farewell, Gao enters his vehicle and drives off with the men in pursuit. A high-speed car chase ensues, ultimately resulting in the accident. In the present, Gao awakens to find himself in a peculiar, primitive village. In this remote village, women hold the dominant position, hunting and providing for their families while men tend to household duties and childcare. Fathers are responsible for cooking meals, while mothers serve as protectors and guards looking after their husband. The village is entirely isolated from the outside world, with no access to technology or scientific advancements. Gao is astonished to discover that Zing is the queen of the tribe. However, he initially struggles to believe her claims and assumes that the villagers are simply enthusiastic cosplayers with impressive costumes and an elaborate setup. He vents his frustration to Zing and the other women, which irritates the tribe leader. In response to Gao's attitude, Zing punishes him by locking him up in a wooden cage. Eventually, Gao comes to the realization that the villagers are, in fact, real people and begins to plan his escape from the secluded village. However, Yunhee, the tribe's astrologer, informs Gao that he cannot leave without Zing's permission. After some time, Gao implores Zing to release him from his wooden confinement and take him back to his car. Initially hesitant, Zing decides to show mercy and agrees to help him. The two make their way back to the crash site, where Gao searches for useful supplies in his car. While playfully swinging a metal bat he found in the trunk, Gao accidentally strikes Zing on the head, causing her to lose consciousness. Seizing the opportunity to flee, Gao dons a backpack and runs into the nearby woods. However, moments later, the car's fuel tank begins to leak, and a fire breaks out, trapping Zing in a ring of flames. The villagers soon spot the fire and quickly rush to the scene, dousing the flames with buckets of water. After hearing the villagers' screams, Gao rushes back to the fiery scene and feels guilty for abandoning Zing. He pours a bucket of water over himself and bravely enters the ring of fire, rescuing Zing before the car explodes. The duo lands in a nearby pond, where the relieved villagers find them. In the following scene, Gao discovers his phone in his backpack and plays a song that catches Zing's attention. Initially frightened by the unfamiliar device, Zing tries to destroy it, but Gao convinces her that it is harmless. He offers her his earphones, and they listen to music together until Zing falls asleep. Gao places the sleeping Zing in bed and begins searching the room for a map that could lead him back to the city. Instead, he finds a valuable sapphire gemstone and decides to ask Zing about it when she awakens. The next morning, Zing tells him that the sapphire was a gift from her dead mother. A greedy Gao offers her several items, such as a bowl of instant noodles, a novel, and even his phone, in exchange for the stone. However, Zing refuses to part with the gem, explaining that it is her most prized possession. Gao is disappointed but resolves to steal the gem instead. The next day, Zing invites Gao to join her for stargazing in an open field at night. Excited at the prospect of seeing the stars, Gao accepts her invitation, unaware of the tribe's customs. That night, as they lay on the grass and gaze at the sky, Zing unexpectedly tries to remove Gao's clothes. Confused and uncomfortable, Gao pushes her away, leading to a heated argument. Gao soon realizes that in the village, watching the stars means having sex, and he quickly makes a run for it back to his hut, with Zing in hot pursuit. Zing is furious with Gao and imprisons him upon their return to the village. Gao tries to explain that the phrase has a different meaning where he comes from, where people express their feelings romantically in different ways, like confessing their love during a snowfall. Zing eventually comes to understand Gao's perspective, but still insists that he spend the night in the cell while she returns to her own shed. Zana and Kin search relentlessly for Gao in the city but are unable to find any trace of him. They even check the road where his car swerved off the cliff, but to no avail. Kin decides to use a drone to search the area, but unfortunately, a magnetic field interferes with the aircraft and causes Kin's monitor to go blank. As Zana and Kin return home, they come across Lai and a businesswoman with whom Gao had signed a contract. Lion, a businesswoman, which requires him to meet with her every 15 days. If he fails to do so, he will be fined 60 million. However, Gao has been missing for 13 days, and Lion has come looking for him. Zana tells Lion that Gao has gone on a trip to the mountains and will return soon. Lion is skeptical but gives them 48 hours to find Gao before taking any action. 
In the village, Zing takes Gao to a secluded area in the woods. She confesses her love for him and pours a bucket of what Gao thinks is chicken blood on him while asking him to marry her. He is taken aback but then realizes that Zing had misheard him the previous night and thought he said blood instead of snow. Gao is furious and walks away in frustration but soon finds himself caught in a trap. He begs Zing to release him from the trap, but she insists that he accepts her proposal of marriage before she does so. Defeated, Gao agrees. On their way back to the village, Gao discovers one of the blades from Kin's drone lying in the bushes, and he realizes that his friends are searching for him. He decides to escape from the village as soon as possible. That night, Gao and Zing talk and agree to get married the following day. Gao asks Zing about the terrain around the village, and she tells him about a secret cave in the forest. Gao is determined to escape from the village and he realizes that the secret cave in the forest could be his way out. He also discovers that the village has a wine reserve and convinces Zing to take him to it. Unbeknownst to her, he slips some sleeping pills into the wine barrel, planning to knock out all the villagers during their wedding. Afterward, the couple returns to Gao's room, where Zing gives him a sapphire stone as an early wedding gift. Gao feels guilty about his plan but takes the gem anyway. The following night, they have their wedding ceremony, and Zing confesses her love for Gao as she goes down on one knee. They exchange vows and dance together as the villagers sing and play a love song. As the feast comes to an end, Gao proposes a toast and urges everyone to drink their bowls of wine. The unsuspecting natives drink the drugged wine, but Gao secretly tosses his away when no one is watching. A few hours later, the villagers fall asleep while Gao packs a bag and leaves the village. He goes through the woods and eventually reaches the cave, which connects to the outside world. Determined, Gao enters the dark cave and begins his journey to the city. The next morning, he finally reaches the end of the cave and races to the top of a mountain. After a long and tiring journey, Gao finally reaches a nearby road and heads back to the city. Meanwhile, at Gao's house, Lion arrives with her men as the 48-hour deadline is about to expire. When Lion inquires about Gao's whereabouts, Zana and Kin deny knowing anything about his disappearance. Lion then presents Zana with a contract that would transfer ownership of the house to her. However, Zana refuses to sign the paperwork. Lion threatens Zana and Ken and orders her men to hold them hostage until Zana signs the document with a thumbprint. As luck would have it, Gao bursts into the house just in time to stop Lion and her men. Ken takes advantage of the commotion and swallows the signed contract while Gao confronts Lion. In the end, the businesswoman leaves the house and assures Gao that they will keep in touch. After Lion departs, Gao freshens up and enjoys a meal with his friends, who are eager to know where he has been all this time. However, Gao is determined to keep the village secrets safe from the outside world, so he skillfully dodges their questions and lies to his friends. After the meal, Gao reveals the sapphire gem he received from Zing. Zana and Kin are amazed by the stone's size and rarity. Gao hands over the gem to Zana along with a soil sample from the village for further analysis. Later that same day, the trio pays a visit to Gao's uncle, Wen, at a nursing home. They put on a clown costume and entertain the elderly occupants, bringing smiles to their faces. Meanwhile, back in the village, the villagers wake up to discover that Gao is missing. Zing is heartbroken and soon realizes that Gao has escaped with the sapphire gem. Overcome with sadness, she decides to go to the city to search for him. Initially, the village astrologer, Yanhi, disapproves of her heading to the city. But when Zing begs her, Yanhi takes Zing to the cave's entrance and warns her to be careful of the people in the city before she departs. Upon arriving in the city, Zing runs into Yitian, a famous astrology social media influencer who is searching for a female co-host. Zing's unusual outfit and behavior catch Yitian's attention, and he offers to sign her to his company. When he asks for her manager, Zing is confused and gives him a card that Gao had left behind in the village. He finds a number on the card and tracks Gao to a nearby nursing home. Zing requests he's help to find Gao, so he drives her to the nursing home. While Zing searches for Gao, he spots her from a distance and runs away before she sees him. He hides behind some bushes and watches as Zing looks for him. Eventually, Zing gives up and starts walking towards the exit of the nursing home, but she hears Gao sneeze from a nearby bush and turns around. Wearing his clown costume, Gao pops out from behind a nearby bush, but Zing doesn't recognize him and watches as he jumps away. Shortly after, Zing and he get into the car and leave the nursing home. While they are driving, he informs Zing that clowns are not actual creatures but just humans wearing masks. Zing is surprised by this information and realizes that the strange clown she saw at the home was indeed Gao. She requests that he takes her back to the nursing home, and he agrees. Unfortunately, upon reaching the nursery, Zing and he discover that Gao and his friends have already left, leaving Zing feeling disappointed once again. He offers to take Zing to his house, but she insists on waiting for Gao's return and sits down on the pavement in front of the nursery, even as the rain starts to pour. Feeling remorseful for hiding from Zing, Gao enlists Kin's help to locate her. After a few minutes, Kin informs Gao that Zing, along with Yi, is still at the nursing home. 
grateful for the update. Gao thanks Ken and immediately rushes back to the nursery. There, Gao spots Zing sitting in the rain with Yi beside her. He pulls up in front of the duo and winds down his window. Zing is shocked to see him and immediately grabs him by his shirt. Gao frantically begs her not to punch him and comes up with an absurd lie, stating that it is wrong to hit people in the rain. Zing is naive, so she believes him and enters his car as he drives her back to his house. As soon as they reach Gao's house, Zing pulls out her crossbow and aims it at him, but Gao manages to calm her down and convinces her to put the weapon away. Zing demands that Gao return her sapphire. But he distracts her by offering a cake, which she eagerly devours and forgets about the gem. After finishing the cake, Zing spends the rest of the day exploring Gao's house, marveling at the modern gadgets and amenities. She mistakes the television for a monster and shoots an arrow at it, but Gao assures her that it's just a harmless device. Zing is fascinated by the modern world and enthusiastically swings a punctured feather pillow, accidentally making a mess of the house in the process. The next day, Zana pays a visit to Gao and is taken aback by the state of the living room which is in a mess. Not long after, Zing strolls up to her while munching on a bowl of instant noodles. Zana snatches the dish from Zing and demands to know who she is and her relationship with Gao. Zing is angered by Zana's attitude and grabs her by the face as the dealer screams in fear. Gao is woken up by the scream and rushes downstairs to find out what happened. He discovers Zana wrapped in a blanket with a cloth covering her mouth. Gao promptly frees her and is shocked to learn that Zing is responsible. Zana is furious and demands to know who the strange-looking girl is. Gao takes her to his room upstairs and confesses what happened when he went missing. Gao explains that Zing is the queen of a secluded matriarchal village where women are in charge and men are submissive. Zana is initially skeptical, but she believes Gao when he shows her Zing's native crossbow. As they arrive in the living room, Zing hears a knock on the window and sees he outside the house. She rushes to the door, trying to open it, but can't figure out how. He gives her directions, but Zing uses brute force, breaking the handle and eventually the door. Gao and Zana hear the crashing sound and rush downstairs to see what happened. Gao is angry to find Yi in his home and drags him out, locking the gate. However, Yi refuses to leave and reveals that he knows Zing is from a secluded island. Gao is shocked and warns Yi to stay away from her before returning to the house with Zing. The next day, Gao takes Zing to a fashion store to get some new clothes. Zing tries on some outfits while Gao steps out to give her some privacy. Outside, Gao is surprised to see Lion approaching from a distance and is afraid that she will discover Zing. He quickly hides behind a wall and watches as the stern woman enters the store. Watch the part 2 in next video. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.